Hey everybody, last Sunday I went to Washington Crossing State Park, the Washington Crossing of this famous painting, where I wanted to see if I could find some cool looking trees. And I did, I found many. I took along a couple cameras and uh, here's a couple of the cool photos I got while I was there. As you can see, unfortunately, with the fall weather, all I brought with me was black and white film, which, no, no. well, the photos looked cool. I wanted to try some color. I think it's a, <laughs> there, there must be a law somewhere that says you've got to take color photos in the fall. And so I got some new color film from B&H and I decided to go out this Friday to the very same place and take a few more photos. I was going to go with my Nikon S3 rangefinder and the Pentax 17, this beautiful little half-frame camera. The problem is, this thing has a very tiny frame. Let me show it to you. See that? It's a half-frame. You get 72 shots with this camera. I just don't have 72 ideas, so I have to do half rolls with this. And I decided on Friday that this was going to be the day when I would uh, give the maiden voyage of my new designed film splitting gadget. And so this is what it is. It's a little 3D printed gadget like this, where you insert a fresh roll of film in an empty canister, connect them like that. And it's light tight and you just put a little thing on the end. Once your film is inside, you can start cranking and load the other canister. Let me show you how it works. I've got these already hooked up. I'll give you a closer demo in a minute. I set them inside. And we follow the arrow, which tells us to turn this direction. And as we do so, here's the trick. I've seen gadgets like this online before, but they never tell you how much film you have loaded. You have to guess by how many rotations you make, and that's finicky at best because the more you load, the more film each revolution loads. So it's not a constant rate thing. And there's a lot of slack at the beginning, so you turn quite a bit before the film even starts moving. Well, I decided to take a page out of Canon's book. Here's a Canon A1, and you look on the bottom, and there's a little dot right there that little dot. And as film goes through the mechanism, this little dot just rotates. The dot is actually the bottom of this sprocket. It's the pivot of the sprocket. So I said, why can't I do the same thing? And I put a little dot on the bottom and a little sprocket inside. And the sprocket, as it turns, the little dot rotates. So that shows you, there we go. See that dot moving? Each time it goes around, it's one perfect frame. So I can count how many frames I'm going to load. And then when I've got all the frames I want, I pop it open, take the film out, cut it in half. I'm good to go. Let me show you in detail how this thing works and how I came about the magic number for how many frames to count as you're loading. This is one of the amazing things about 3D printing is that we can prototype quite a bit as we're trying to dial in everything. So let me clear this mess out of the way and show you how it works. So the key feature of this device comes down to having a small sprocket right in here can see, I don't know if you can see that turning, but that is actually turning this little pivot right here, this, this end thing, which has a dot on it. And you see what we have here is a small sprocket mechanism. If we take a piece of film and we put that on there, we see that these teeth interact with the sprocket holes with the perforations on the edge of the film perfectly. As you're winding the film across, it's going to cause this small 
pivot to turn and this little white dot, which all that is, is a small piece of 3D printing filament shoved in a hole in the end. Each time you see that dot rotate, eight teeth have passed by and that accounts for exactly one frame of 35 millimeter film. And if you're using the Pentax 17, you would count a half rotation of the dot. So let's see how this goes together. This pivot thing goes through a small hole in the center like that. And then there's a plug that goes on top of that. And then the cap goes on top of that. So this is made out of five 3D printed parts. First, this crank knob. This was not designed by me and I don't have the STL file uploaded to my printables page. I'll provide the link to the guy's page who does have it. It's just a very good knob. I liked it and I figured why redesign this thing. Uh, I just would say print this out in 100% fill because these uh, forks here that go inside the end of the uh, cartridge are they get weak if you print them in anything less than 100% fill. So this is important to print solid. This setup here is one two three four there's four parts here when you print this the lid goes face down onto the surface and you can see there's a there's a little arrow here telling the direction to turn the crank and the body goes bottom side down onto the uh, printing surface and they need no supports the pivot you print that with the bottom on the surface and if you're lucky you shouldn't need any supports on that either and the plug goes with the uh, the largest side face down on the printing surface when you go to put this all together take a 1 16th inch drill bit and clean the hole out because the hole is not going to be perfect you want to clean that out you just put the bit in there and twist it around and then that should be a perfect snug fit for a piece of filament Finally, I'll say that this hole where the central pivot goes should be absolutely clean on the inside because this needs to spin freely. So what I ended up doing was going through my drill index and finding the largest drill that I could slide in there without too much effort. And I put it in there by hand and spun it around and it, and it turned out to be a letter drill. It turned out to be a G drill, which is uh, one size larger than an F drill which is your clearance hole size for a quarter 20 for the machinists out there. Uh, if you're metric, then you presumably will have a different kind of a drill bit in your life and just find the one that fits not too snugly that you can put in there and clean things up by hand. And then use like a, a razor knife and just clean any burrs off of this. The idea is you want this to slip inside that hole and twist absolutely freely because um, this is going to be driven by the edge of the film. Let's split a roll of Kodak Gold 200. There it is. This little leader piece is typically about one frame and we just want to trim it as close as possible. And now we want to attach, we're going to use this little cine still roll. Grab a piece of my pre-cut vinyl. Use any good tape that you like. And what we'll do is we will stick this Tape on it like, just like that. And we don't want to pull the film out any more than we have to. This is going to be the end of the roll. So take the cine still roll and let's attach it. I will typically move it over so that I get the film just started. And now when I load it, I put the empty cylinder, the cine still one, 
with the uh, pointy bit facing up. Get it in place. Put the lid on. This is now light tight. Now all we need to do is put the crank in and start turning. Follow the arrow. Okay, I've moved half a frame. Now let's move 20 more frames. One, two, 20. Take it apart. Just put your finger in there to pull the film off the sprockets. And now, snip. No need to get fancy with the leader. Just cut it at a 45 degree angle, about like that. And make a note. Well, this is how I do it. You can do it whichever way you want. This is gold 200. And there you have it. We've split a roll of film very accurately in the middle. I went and took the film that I shot on Friday and looked very carefully at the ends. And this you could tell this is half frame film. This came out of the Pentax 17. And I looked at the ends and I was able to match up the parts that I clipped off along with the original long tongue and counted how many total frames. And I counted frames in a uh, full frame manner. So two of these would have been one frame, one frame, one frame, one frame. And I measured this one. And then I grabbed the other half. This is the one I shot in my Nikon S3. And you can see we had the similar thing going on at the beginning where we have all the film that was exposed. There's the other piece that we clipped off when we loaded the Patterson reel. And you can see the initial film that was uh, exposed when we loaded the camera. And then my blank frames, one, two, that I shot, I could have shot one less blank frame. And at the end, this is actually the original end of the Gold 200. And you can see when I was inside the changing bag, I did a pretty grotty job of cutting it with the scissors, but I didn't lose anything. So by looking at what I actually did on Friday and counting, I was able to come up with this little diagram. It turns out that a single roll of 35 millimeter film is 64 inches long. It's 163 centimeters. That turns out to be 42 frames. And that's from the roll on the inside all the way to the tip, including the little cutout piece. And what I've done here is shown the first half that comes out, which is the one we initially loaded. And you can see right here, but well, we're gonna have to snip off the end. Then this piece becomes our new end of the reel. This is the one that's going to go inside the new 35 millimeter canister. And we go all the way until we find our split point, cut the film, cut the little slant on it, and we're going to lose about three frames if we're very careful with the way we load our camera. Turns out this gives us 70 good frames with the way I did this, where I said, let's load it by counting 20 frames before cutting. On Friday, I counted 21 and I ended up with a uh, slightly imbalanced. Uh, I had more shots on the uh, first roll and fewer shots on the second roll. This way gives you about the best split. Uh, count out 20 frames before you cut it. And so you look, and this is the original film canister on the left. You can see this uh, 
where I've expanded up top. You see we've got where I put a new slatted cut. We lose one half of a frame at the end of the canister where we cut off the film when we're inside the changing bag. And at the very beginning, again, the same thing. If we're very careful loading our camera, we probably will get three exposed frames worth of film lost. And so that gives us 16 good frames. So when we split a roll of 35 millimeter film, if we're careful, we'll have one roll that has 17 good frames, any other that has 16 good frames. That gives us uh, 33 frames instead of 36, and I'm happy with that. This gives me the ability to shoot only half a roll and develop them right away, leaving the other half for another day. By doing this, I get rolls that are perfectly sized for the Pentax 17. So there you have it. And here are a few of the photos that I took on Friday with my new split films, with some of them taken with the Nikon S3 and the others taken with the Pentax 17. As an aside, I just wanted to give a shout out to this cool lady who was at the, uh, there's a little tavern on the uh, street corner at the bridge that crosses the Delaware there. And as I was walking back, there were a bunch of uh, uh, Sunday morning uh, motorcycle riders who'd had lunch. And this lady was on the back of a motorcycle and she looks at me and says, hey, take my picture. Aren't you going to take my picture? And she put on a big smile and put her hands in the air. And I said, yeah, hang on one second. I, I got to set this up. And I got my Canon camera that I was using that day. And I focused. And I took the shot. I was afraid I was never gonna, that it was never going to be any good. But the thing is, we get people that give us the stink eye all the time when we're out shooting. I get people that either just argue with me, and I had one guy that was almost threatening me a few weeks back, and it's just a breath of fresh air to have somebody that's like, hey, take my picture. So shout out to you, cool lady on the back of the motorcycle. You made my day. That's all I got. I had a great time on Friday shooting these photos. I had a great time last week shooting the black and white ones, but Better still is my fancy little gadget, worked just fine. It was absolutely light tight, and the mechanism for counting the frames was perfect, and I finally came about the magic number of 20 frames to load when you're splitting a roll of 36. And this is how I'm gonna be doing it from now on. I'm no longer gonna use that uh, stick that I used in the past in the darkroom. This is so much more convenient. So if you wanna try it out, Go ahead and download the STL files. You can print them yourself or you can have them printed by a service. I uh, don't know how that works. If you do have it printed, make a comment about how you had them set it up because it's four different parts you're printing plus the, uh, the knob. It's uh, a little uh, curious myself how that's going to turn out. So, all right, well, go out there, shoot a roll, and have an excellent day. Thank you for watching.